Hey, so I'm writing this because I've had an experience in my personal life with financially irresponsible family members or close friends. And I learn best when I talk about something out loud. So this is me sharing my experience. And hopefully this is valuable for future Jonah. And if it's valuable for just one other person, then I'll be happy. Let's dive in. So here's my story. I have a close family member who I love. And we spend time together. We've worked together on projects and we have a great relationship. But a lot of times we disagree on how to spend money. So my primary financial focus is to currently save money to be able to invest it. And my this, this family member consistently spends a substantial amount of money uh, of their monthly income on what I would consider discretionary purchases. And this wouldn't be an issue, be, except they are always saying that they you know want to invest and they want to have more and, and reach this future goal of income and, and wealth. And it seems like their actions are, are contrary to it. So this is, this is my story. This is what I've experienced. And based on this, uh, in order to protect yourself in a situation like this, when you have a financially irresponsible family member, here has, is, is what's worked for me from my experience. So first off, you have to understand that it's not your job to fix them. It's their life. If they want to go spend a lot of money on an exotic tiger or on maybe spend, spend a ton of like hundreds of dollars on an iPhone case that's embroidered with gold and diamonds or whatever it is, that uh, that's their choice and it's their life and that's just what they're going to do. In the same way that if you were to do that, you would expect that unless you previously asked somebody, hey, if I'm gonna make a purchase like this, you make sure you know you stop me, then it's their life and it's your life and you can do those, you can make that choice if that's the choice you wanna make. Um, second, they spend money differently than you because they have different values from you. This is a big one for me. Regardless of what they say, if they say, oh, I wanna save tons of money and invest in, or I wanna be able to have enough money to buy a Lamborghini every year because I have that much income, or I wanna do this or this or that, don't take their word, only take the value of their actions because wherever their values are is gonna be based on their actions. Words are, are not important when you're taking this into consideration. Just focus on what have they done and what does that say about their values. And once you know that they have different values from you, you can use it as a framework to understand because to what, to them, everything they're doing makes complete sense or they wouldn't do it. So there has to be a different paradigm that you're not seeing that justifies the way that they spend money. And in the same way, you have a paradigm that makes what you do make tons of sense and what they do not make sense. So you have to understand that there's that difference. Now, this third point I think is incredibly important. And I know that this can be very, very challenging, but you have to, as much as possible, create some kind of financial separation. And if this is a spouse or this is somebody who you are financially dependent on or they're financially dependent on you, this can be very challenging. As much as possible, create financial separation. If this means it's a an aunt or an uncle, don't lend them money. Don't let them lend you money so that they have control over you know or, or say over you. Just create that separation as much as impossible, uh, as much as is, is possible. And unfortunately, financial issues are one of I think it's the leading cause for divorce in any relationship. So take that into consideration that these are fundamental values that a person has, and sometimes it's it just won't work out. Don't lend anybody money that you wouldn't be okay losing. This is a big one. If you wouldn't be okay losing this money, don't do it. And as an example, I have a friend who, they're just kind of an acquaintance. I met them, they're from another country, they're studying in the United States, where I'm from. And they asked me for an affidavit of support for a university they want to attend. And this university's tuition is about 33,000 plus some, and they, called me and said, they said, Hey, I have all the money. I you know, can do this. I can support myself. I just need you to sign this affidavit because I need somebody in the States to say, Hey, they, you know, to show your bank account and Hey, you could support me if need be. Um, but I looked into it and I would have been financially liable. So if he didn't, you know, by, by chance pay, and he instead went back to his home country and, and there were still debts, they could come to me and legally say, Hey, you need to pay whatever is remaining in his tuition or board or whatever it may be. 
Uh, and, and that's not a risk I could take. I, I decided, okay, I wouldn't be okay losing $33,000, even though it wouldn't like bankrupt me, I, I could survive if I had to. Uh, it's not a choice. I wouldn't be okay losing that money. So I, I can't, I can't do it. And so I told him, I appreciate it. Here's some other ideas. Maybe look at these universities that might be able to help you. They might be less expensive, etc. But I'm not going to sign a document that makes me liable because that's not a risk that I can tolerate, that I choose to tolerate. Five, um, and this is similar to their values. You have to evaluate actions objectively and independent of words. If they say they're going to do one thing, but they spend in a certain way that says another thing, then you have to take it as, okay, what they, their action is their value, not their words. And this is tough because it seems in these situations, they almost always conflict, where what they say is almost always different from how they act. And you need to look at actions. So I hope this helps for somebody who's having difficulty with a family member or a close friend or a confidant who is spending or has different financial values than you. Um, those are five things that have helped me in order to both separate myself and create understanding around the situation. And lastly, when it comes to reconciling, in some instances, you simply have to cut the ties and evaluate this later. However, as much as possible, if it's a spouse, if it's a friend and they have great qualities and you wanna keep them around, you, it's tough. What has worked for me is to create complete financial distance so I'm not dependent on them in any way. If whatever they do has no impact on me, not legally, not because I signed a document saying, hey, if they don't pay their debts, it falls onto me. I, I don't owe them money, they don't owe me money, nothing. And once you have that separation, then you can interact with them. And it's tough. You got to set those boundaries of, hey, we're going to interact, but I'm not going to have in any way be financially tied and to you and nor you to me. And you have to put it in a positive way that's a win-win for both of us where, hey, you have different goals. I have different goals, but we love to hang out together or we enjoy doing this or we're doing this to help our children or whatever it is. Uh, and so that's why we're going to do what we're going to do, but we're not going to tie up this financial situation because it always leads to conflict. So if you've dealt with a tough financial situation uh, around finances, let me know. Uh, what have you done that's worked? How have you been able to solve this issue? And I hope you have an awesome day and you're awesome.